Put a couple of revs on my phone too. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to install PRL's Cobra cold air intake. As you can see, it's right here. I did get it used, but I wasn't worried about it for the price I got it for. I got it for $180, and I'm really not worried about it at all. Yes, it is used, but they, PRL does sell replacement for the filter, and you can clean it yourself as well, and the housing, and the pipes, and the MAF housing, it's all good, it's all good condition. It is dirty on the outside due to the engine bay, but I mean, it's just the outside, you can easily wipe it down and clean it off. But other than that, it still runs fine, and I do know the owner of it. Originally, it was Rommel, and if you guys don't know Rommel, he's pretty big in the 10 gen community. He originally had it, and then he gave it to one of our SD Action group member, Yaku, his name is Andrew. Uh, if you wanna go check his Instagram out, I'll link his Instagram, or Instagram page on the description down below. I did get it off of him. He is selling all his parts. So he's selling his like K-tuner, downpipe, his flex fuel kit, and the intake that I just bought right now. And he's pretty much just getting rid of all the aftermarket parts he has and just going back to stock. That's also the reason why I thought I would take it because 180 is a steal, especially with the filters. Being able to be replaced for $50, I thought I might as well do it. So before we get the video started, we are going to pop open a beer, you know, relax. Today is a nice, beautiful, cloudy day. So let's enjoy a beer, pop the hood, and get the video started. Well, regardless, it's going to be raining on Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to install this cold air intake today, but I was like, you know what, fuck it, we're going to do it. There's a pull in third gear. Let me switch real quick. And I don't even know if you can hear that, but we'll, read, we'll, we'll do a couple more pulls on third gear because third gear specifically, you can definitely hear the turbo. Second gear, not so much due to my exhaust. First gear, same thing. demonstration for slightly inclined we're gonna do baby pulls from first gear not launch but here you go I didn't realize how dirty my engine bay is till now, but it is fucking messy. So we're going to loosen this bolt, this bolt, and all four corners of this top part of the intake. And we're also gonna remove our MAF sensor and we're going to put this to the side. So let me, give me a second, I'm gonna put my camera down and show you what I'm doing. All right, so for the MAF sensor, what you're gonna wanna do is you're, you're gonna wanna push down hard and then turn it because you don't wanna strip the bolt. So there you go, and there you go. The reason why I say don't strip this is because I bought my intake used and it does not come with the PRL Allen key bolts that they provide. So I'm just going to use my stock bolt for the MAF sensor. So now that you unbolted all four of those bolts, the MAF sensor, and this piece right here, you now have this completely off, and you can throw that away. And we have our filter, which should still be fairly new. Oh, fuck no. It is not new. This is only at 10,000 miles. I expect it to be a little bit more cleaner than this, but we could also throw that away. So now that you have the top box out, what you're going to want to remove are two 10 millimeter bolts, which are right here, along with that one right there. So those two bolts I'll be removed are sitting right here and right there. And now you have one more bolt, which is in the very bottom right here. 
And the easiest way to get it out is if you take out the bottom skid plate. So now we're gonna work on the bottom end and literally you just unscrew that one bolt literally right beneath my finger and then it'll slide out and you'll take out this final part of the stock air box. So under the car, you're gonna have your driver tie right there. You're gonna wanna remove this bolt right here. It's a 10 millimeter along with the one across on that, which is right here. You're gonna need to take out two clips, which is this one and this one. And that will allow you to pull off this bottom piece right here. As you can see, we did take out the skid plate and that's where we're gonna be basically going once we take out this little plastic piece and we're just gonna have it bent down. We're not gonna really completely take it off just enough so you can fold it backwards going towards the rear of the car. That way we could put our hand here and do a couple bolts and take off that bottom box for the stock filter. So on a side note, I did forget to mention that you do have one bolt right here that you're gonna wanna take off. And it's just a regular Phillips head so that way you can pull the wheel well back to enable you to pull the bottom piece off. So remember that stock box that's in the very bottom that we wanted to take out, but we had to go to the bottom right here to take it out. Well, here's that bolt right here. Sorry, I can't really see what I'm seeing. Hopefully you can and hopefully it's clear. And that takes off the rest of this piece. So we're gonna take off this bolt and that's pretty much it. So once we take off this bolt, this bottom air box will come off and we can take it off from the top or the bottom. Guys, don't be a noob like me. So I lied. That's not the only bolt you're gonna wanna take off. So after this one, there's also another bolt right here. If we could focus, sitting literally right here after you just took out this bolt, which hopefully it loads, or not loads, but focuses. So you have this one, you have another one right here in the back. Unfortunately, I don't have a wrench because I can't find any of my tools, but we'll use some vice grips and that will also do the job. Definitely having the right tools will be better than to not have the proper tools. This thing was a pain in the fucking dick to get out. But now that we got it out, we just fucking just pretty much yank the shit if it can even fucking let me. Well, here you go. One second. There you go. I fucking pull this shit out. God damn. This thing was a pain in the fucking ass. Oh, fuck it. Throw it through the fucking bottom. Why the fuck did I thought? Okay guys, so throwing it through the bottom is actually easier than fucking pulling it up. That was a pain in the ass. I was It was getting stuck between this right here and this. Just throw that shit between the fucking thing and throw that shit in the track. Alright guys, earlier I said to just throw your stock box away. That is not the case. I was just joking because especially with these laws in California, the one that just got passed down, it's an existing law, but it's non-fixable anymore. You have to pay a thousand dollar fine, yada, yada, yada. I'm pretty sure all you car people know about the law that's happening right now and a lot of people getting pulled over. So we're going to keep the stock box in case we do get pulled over in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the stock parts together and, you know, put it away somewhere safe that it won't get dirty and cover up all the holes that are definitely crucial. So no dirt or spider webs or any bugs just develop inside of there. And that's pretty much it. Now, now is the process of getting all of this stuff mounted on. And we do have to relocate the clutch, which let me grab in one second. So Purell does provide you a relocation bracket. And how this works is you are going to take out your clutch line right here. And you are going to move it over one inch to the hole right there behind it. The stock bolt is going to move along with the clutch line into this hole right here. And this bolt right here from PRL is going to go where the stock bolt was. So let me go ahead and do that and show you what I mean by that. So here's the finished product. You have the relocator kit right there. And like I said, this is where the stock one, well, wait, let's see. This is where the stock bolt was. And then this was also where the clutch was at it was right this whole thing was right here we shifted it once but we put the PRL attachment first and then we put the clutch line above the kit and it has a hole for you to line up right here and then you just bolt it together all right so underneath the car you're gonna want to see your this is the where the cone is gonna go and this is where it's gonna connect to the bracket and looking underneath the car this is where you're, where you're gonna install the bolt. 
So this is one of the brackets PRL provided you and you're going to install one bolt and then we'll eventually put the elbow piece through here. And one more thing that I forgot to tell you guys is back up here, you're going to want to take this piece off but keep your stock bolts because we are going to use that with the other bracket that PRL did provide you which is this one right here. So now that you have this piece off, remember those two stock bolts I told you to keep? Well, they're right here. And how you're gonna wanna install it is, you're gonna grab this bracket, and it's literally the same exact distance as a stock one, so it should be straightforward. You're going to install it this way. Can you see that? So you're gonna, there's gonna be one bolt on the left side, two bolts here, and bolt it down just like that. So you're gonna put one bolt on for now because we're gonna put the cone, or the, elbow piece right there and you don't want to block the way so it's literally the same distance as the stock one if you look right here it literally goes right here above each other so you can't get the two confused and you shouldn't be able to mix it up and get lost to begin with and on top of that there is only one bolt on this section right here so you really can't mix this up or you know get confused with this it's straightforward and I can't really explain it too much so now we're going to put this part this elbow piece through right here and we're going to do that just by you know shoving it between here and making sure that nothing is blocked but let me go ahead and put it in and I'll show you how it looks so now that we have the elbow piece down how you're gonna want to do it is you're gonna want to put this bender liner back to pull it through and this is the bracket that we did at the bottom so we're gonna connect these two brackets here and there's also one more nut that goes right here and it's held by two bolts if I can find it right here so it is held by two bolts it's right here it's a nut and a bolt you're gonna want to put it between there to lock it down and we're gonna screw these two together so that's currently how the bottom part sits you have two bolts and two bolts holding the elbow piece and we're gonna go back to the top and bolt the elbow piece to the other bracket so there you go here's the bracket everything is tight I just need to tighten it all the way down I just want to show you that that one bolt connects to right here and we need to tighten these two down. You want to make sure these two are tight because you don't want this wiggling around, especially when you're doing, I mean, when you're racing or anything. You, you just don't want it to move around in general. So it's better if you just secure it all right now than to do it later and forget about it. So we're going to go ahead and tighten that down. And after this, we're going to put the silicone right there on top of the elbow piece. So this is how it looks like. The silicone is connected to the elbow piece. And we just need to tighten that part down, the little bolt. And now we just got to put in this hosing right here connect there and here and we'll tighten everything down and then we'll finally put the cone on so I decided to take a break it's pretty much done all I got to do is just tighten up the bottom parts but this one is pretty straightforward I didn't think I needed to you know go over on how to tighten the rings down but you just tighten it down math sensor this is a very important part so this right here it has an arrow it has an arrow pointing towards this way so it's going that way towards the turbo. Make sure the arrow is pointing that way because you don't want it to throw any codes. And from there, we just tighten it down. As you can see, this one is tightened and then the one right there is tightened. And the cone, some of you guys might find it hard in the cone, but so when you're, when you're in the bottom of the car, you want the, cone, you want the top of the cone to go on first and then pull it down so the bottom one grips it. That's, that's the way I did it. You know, a lot of people say it's hard, but it's also because you're mixing plastic with silicone and everything, and vice versa. But it's really not hard. I found it to be easy. The only times I find it hard it was when I had to improvise because I didn't have the proper tools. But everything is tightened down. I just need to close everything up in the bottom end. And I thought I'd show you right now before you know daylight runs out. So once I tighten everything up, I put the skid plate back on. I put the wheel well covers, all that shit back on. I tighten everything. We're going to take this car out for a spin. We're going to do a couple pulls. I'm not going to do any revs because my exhaust is too loud for you to even hear the turbo. Well, I mean, it's not that loud, but like I'm in the garage. So all that exhaust noise is just going to echo and you won't really hear the turbo. But who knows? I might throw in some couple revs in there, but that's pretty much it. I had to go to Harbor Freight to grab one of these wrenches. The reason why I wanted, I needed a wrench is actually because there's this one bolt that's in the bottom, which I'll show you right now. There's this one bolt that you need a wrench for the back side. So, if you look right here, let me set my phone down. 
So here is the intake and what I meant earlier when I said go from the top and go from the bottom What you want to put on first is the one you want to put the back side first and then pull it down to get this part to close in So this is the bolt I'm talking about It's a nut in the back and a bolt in the front and I need a 10 mil to hold the one in the back so I could screw this one tight Everything else is tight This is the only thing that's been holding me back because I've been looking for a 10 millimeter wrench and I can't find one in the house so I had to go out of my way to buy one from Harbor Freight, which we are actually going to, you know, finish it up right now, get it over with, and we're going to go on that test drive. So now that we've got the bolts tightened up and everything, and our bottom side is tight, our middle section is tight, and our top section is tight, we're just going to put all this bottom side together along with the skid plate, and then we're going off on the test drive, and I am really excited. Uh... I don't know what to expect. I've seen a lot of good reviews on it and a lot of videos on it. And honestly, this was an easy install, but if I had all the tools ready, if I didn't need to go around scattering the place, looking for tools, trying to scavenge some fucking tools, and if I had an extension for the fucking, the, the bottom part, the bottom part of the air box, you know how, or not even the bottom part. When you first take off the top layer of the, the air box, below the filter part, that's the one where you need an extension. I didn't have a fucking extension. So I had to go digging around for one. <clears throat> I ended up asking my neighbor for an extension. And he had one. Which worked out well. So I ended up using it. But at 10 mil, I didn't want to bug him. Because I already bugged him once for borrowing an extension. So I thought, you know what? Let's just fucking look for it. And we ended up going to fucking Harbor Fright. But it's whatever. More tools. And also means more tools to fucking lose. That's pretty much it. We're going to close it up. And... Go for a ride. So everything is completely done. We have everything tightened. I double checked everything. I went through it tw three times actually. And everything is perfect. And I made sure all the rings are tight. The bottom one right there. I made sure the clutch line is, you know, not loose. The bottom pan, the oil pan in the bottom, or the oil, not the oil, the skid plate. The skid plate is tight. You know, the underbody is tight. Everything is tight. And I'm just double checking, nothing's in the way so I don't run anything over, pop a tire. So like right here we have a tool, so we're gonna pull this out and literally we're gonna start the car. reversing we're just gonna drive it around like 3,000 4,000 rpms like a normal normal drive so let's go holy shit no fucking way all right so I'm gonna get another video clip and you're gonna see where my rpms are at and I should probably set my thing my tachometer to psi so you can see it see. so there you go we're at negative nine psi and we're not gonna launch it or anything we're just going to drive it to whatever rpms you see it at Holy shit! 
it. And I'm not even gonna lie, having this intake on makes me just wanna just fucking wide open throttle this thing. So here's the third, third gear pull. sport mode this is just regular driving mode and this is a street map so I don't need a tune or anything Thank you guys again for watching my video i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys enjoyed this video give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you have not already comment down below what you guys think of the intake that it also is used so let me know what you guys think about the intake in general whether it's used or not or if you guys have it yourself or if you know someone that has it let me know what you think of it and no i do not have a blow off valve in the car this is all the sound you're hearing is coming from directly the intake itself so PRL did an amazing job pulling or putting together this part sorry there's a car coming I just want to make sure he's not trying to hit me or anything but yeah uh, huge shout out to Yaku SI he's actually the one that sold it to me huge shout out to PRL for making such an amazing product you know once again like this thing put a smile to my face and I could fucking hear even in first gear you hear the turbo and normally on stock intake I can only hear the turbo around like on third gear around 25 2500 rpms give or take that's where I usually hear it but that's it for the video until then, I'll see you guys next time.